When I wrote my first game in uh, the early 1990s, I wrote it on a programming language called Chipmunk Basic, and it was a regular snake game where you could go around and try to eat an apple, or a red dot in this case, without trying to hit the border or run into yourself. But I did not know about arrays back then, so every element of the worm was a variable of its own. And then I had a long list of if statements checking if any of those variables had been hit. I would have been so much better off if I knew about arrays and could just loop through an array with all the items of the worm. Just as we have some plates, we want to sometimes do the same thing multiple times or store similar things in a pile of plates. And that's what we're going to do with arrays. I'm Johan Brodfeldt. I've been a developer for 25 years and 15 of those in the Dataflix community. I'm doing these videos because I want to help you build state-of-the-art applications using Dataflix. Let's begin. This is how you create an array. If you set the size, the array becomes static and you get an error saying index out of bound if you try to address elements outside of the allotted size. Move 3 to AI test element 0 is the default way of adding elements but I like to write less code, so I prefer to use the stir split to array. Obviously, that only works with string data, so for the fun of it, I created a function to convert string data into integers in an array. You can also compare entire arrays, but be aware of that they can be different even if they contain the same data. You see this as we can assign 10 to the fifth element of AI test 2, but not in AI test 1. The difference here is that AI test 1 is a static array, but the array returned from my default made function does not return a static array, even though I, AI test 2 was static to begin with. So AI test 2 is actually not static anymore. And that's why it's not the same. Max array can be used to get the highest value from an array, but you can also create your own ref func and pass that as a parameter if you want your own filter. Mean array works the same way. Count array does not count item in an array, but occurrences of a specific value in an array. I usually get that wrong. You can also search using search array. If you want to count the total number of elements in an array, you should use the size of array. Other useful functions for arrays are remove from array, insert in array, reverse array and shuffle array. You can also append, copy, fill, resize arrays with respective functions. And as you see, Dataflex is a very written language, so you write out a lot of the uh, functions and uh, else begin and all of these things. And that's one of the reasons it became so popular back in the 80s, because it was easy for non-developers to read the code and understand what was going on. You can create what's called a jagged array, but be aware that it can still only contain one type of data. If you want to use other variable types, you could try to create an array using the type variant or experiment with structs that we will look into in the next video. Arrays will help you manage larger data sets. And um, there are many functions that can help you manipulate the data. Now it's your turn to try to write an array filled with your favorite items and try to sort them and see if you can access the data again. 
Have a blast and write something in the comments if you figured something fun out. And um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like the video if you do so. It will help us immensely to spread the word and I see you in the next one.